This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. So ever since the November 2015 ban list, Shadol players and Shadol enthusiasts alike have all patiently and anxiously yearned for the day sometime in the future where they can finally play Construct in their decks again. And to those players, they can finally rejoice, for that day has finally come. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and today we're going to be talking about one of the newest legacy support monsters spoiled for release in the OCG's Link Vrains pack. And that monster is Shadal Construct. Shadal Construct. Not El Shadal Construct, just Shadal Construct. No L's to be taken here. All joking aside, this card is pretty solid for what it is, and it does solve some of the long-standing problems the Shadal theme has had, as well as helping solve how the deck plays under Master Rule 4. But, it also has its own flaws and problems that are really only attributable to weak design foresight in the R&D department of Konami. Well, I say weak, but maybe overly cautious is a bit more accurate. I mean, Shadals have been a force, a driving force of the format many times in the past, but then again, if you look at the Burning Abyss Link monster and compare it to what it does compared to Shadals, then there's kind of a off, like an off-balance comparison here. Uh, but still, regardless. That said, this is definitely not the construct we wanted, but I will gladly take it anyway. As I said, it does solve some of the old issues the old doll decks had, but there are still some issues that I'll get into. But Anyway, Shadal Construct is a Link 2 Light Fairy effect monster with 1200 attack and its markers point left and right. No markers point down at all, and while that may seem odd, it makes perfect sense once you dive into the card's effects and its functions around those. Its materials are fairly generic, only requiring two flip effect monsters, but honestly, I feel this is the biggest design flaw of the card, but I'll touch on that more a bit later. It has two effects, and the first is, during your main phase, you can fusion summon one Shadal fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. Straight away, I should say that I love this effect. I love, love, love this effect. It's a built-in polymerization on a monster you summon from your extra deck, and this is huge for Doll's consistency. Shadals have often struggled in the past with consistency getting to fusion spells, considering the only good Shadal fusions to support competitive play were the original Shadal fusion and El Shadal fusion, and the only way to search those was through the incredibly slow Hedgehog flip effect, or if you were a savage and got lucky off of a card like Curry Bandit, but that still required you to wait until your next turn. You only had six fusion spells that were on theme, and then your search methods for them all required you to go to another turn. It was, it was very slow in that regard, and the deck really couldn't do a lot without access to those fusion spells to heighten its play. But toward the end of the Shadal era, players innovated with playing a single copy of Elemental Hero Blazeman and a single copy of Polymerization to be searched by it. This was part of a Rota engine, a reinforcement of the army engine, because the card was at 3 at the time, and could also search cards like Raiden, the Hand of the Light Sworn, and Armageddon Knight to either fuse with, Raiden being a very valuable light monster, or to trigger Shadal effects if you already drew a fusion spell and didn't need the Blaze Man. This was reliable then, but is no longer viable with Reinforcement of the Army being limited back to one, although we have different engines now like Predaplants and Lunalites that can fairly reliably search polymerization or even the Shadal fusions themselves. Protoplant Scorpio into Darling Cobra can search Shadal Fusion or El Shadal Fusion, so arguably some of these problems have been swapped out and some of these problems have been alleviated. But my main point being, while those options exist and are slash can be used, they are still cards that you have to draw into in your main deck that is sort of a hindrance. You have to build your deck around these cards, they take up slots that, you know, they really don't work by themselves too much, and especially in the case of Lunalite Black Sheep, you have to be playing Tenki, and there's not really any good other Beast Warrior targets to warrant playing, uh, like Tenki to in your doll deck. But meanwhile, Shadal Construct is a monster in your extra deck that is summonable at any point simply by your deck functioning as intended, which is by putting Shadals on board. It's very simple. So this combined with the fact that it's a Shadal and can be used as the Shadal part of any fusion that you summon with its own effect, makes it a very economical fusion effect that is continuously beneficial to you throughout the game. It doesn't take up space in your main deck, it's a card that can fuse on its own effect, it can be used as part of the fusion that you're making with its own effect, and it's supported by your deck's core game plan, which is to just put Shadals on the field. 
It's even a light monster, so if we ever did get El Shadal Construct back, this card could be used as the light monster to summon big construct with its own fusion effect. This would give the Shadal deck more consistent ways to a good light monster to fuse with than it has ever had before, since this construct is always going to be chilling out in your extra deck or in your graveyard to be used. Now, its second effect is what makes the link markers make so much more sense when otherwise they wouldn't make sense at all. That effect is if this card is in your graveyard, you can send one should all card from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card. So, so, this card has a built in fusion effect that allows you to fuse with itself into a new Shadal monster. And then it has a built-in recursion effect that allows you to revive it into your main monster zones by discarding a Shadal card. This entire card has such a brilliant design in this aspect, as it is a self-recurring fusion source that also opens up additional zones for you to summon from the extra deck into. All by itself, this card is designed for you to make first in your extra monster zone but give you no link marker benefits, and then to fuse away with it. That's why no markers point down. This card essentially opens up the benefits that you'd need to summon several Link Monsters to get in other decks, but it contains them all in itself as one card and one Link Summon. This is all fantastic design even before you realize that it triggers all your Shadal effects by doing this. You can discard Shadal cards to revive this as well, so duplicate fusion spells that you, can, you can't use because you have hard once per turns on them, you can discard those. Shadal Core, you can discard that. Recur fusion spells. Shadal Monsters, you can discard those and proc their effects. It's all fantastic. You can essentially abuse this card further turn by turn to summon more extra deck cards into your main monster zones that it opens for you, and then fuse away with this card, and then use its effect to bring itself back in a different zone, opening up different zones entirely for extra deck summons based on your wants and needs. It can pop around to different zones by itself and open up different places for you to summon from the extra deck into. This is a super cool and super utility based card and effect, so Basically, it fits the Shadal design formula to a T in that regard. All of the Shadal effects have always been very nifty and very utility based. They do one thing, but they do that thing super well. In most aspects. We're not counting you, Wendigo. You, you can stay over in your corner. So now, I just gave this card a huge amount of praise and talked about its design being great. So, what did I mean before when I said that it has its own flaws in design and its own problems in design? Well, its summoning materials, while fairly generic for the Shadal archetype, are pretty hard to achieve within the Shadal deck itself. Without outside assistance, the earliest you could summon this card is on your second turn after resolving a Falco plus Sinister Shadow Games play, and having both of those monsters survive, being the Falco and the monster you bring back. I would have liked this card to have been a little bit more generic within the Shadal theme itself, maybe by having materials like two flip slash Shadal monsters. This would give the deck a bit of an easier time into accessing it, because you would then be able to link away with Shadal fusions, like Winda, that can be instant fusioned onto the field. That would allow easier access to the card on earlier turns, and it would allow for plays to clear your extra monster zone of a Shadal fusion to summon this card in its place, because right now that is kind of the problem. If you Shadal fusion first and put a card into your extra monster zone, like Winda or Shekinaga, there's no real way for you to summon this card because you don't have any more extra monster zones that you can summon an extra deck card into, and your Winda that you just got your pluses off of by sending two Shadals in the grave, which would be something you would use to summon this card, those pluses would be valuable, it's just not something that you're allowed to do, so that's a, that's a big oversight. But unfortunately, as it currently exists, in order for quick pinpoint access into this card, you have to either get lucky or rely on outside resources outside of the Shadal theme. The Subterra archetype may provide a suitable engine for assisting summoning this construct, or maybe even the upcoming Tindangle archetype could be a useful engine. So far, the only idea I've seen that I somewhat like is Rescue Cat summoning two Beast Flip Effect monsters. There are quite a few of these in the game that are usable, and Rescue Cat being at 3 alongside with Summoner Monk being at 3 gives quite an easy access potential into Flip Effect monsters for making this construct. Many of the Beast monsters are kind of bleh, and will basically be the equivalent of a Gym Knight Garnet in your deck, if you draw it. This is unless you specifically pick cards like Raikō that can be used to out cards and potentially trigger Shadal effects if milled, or if you choose beasts that have attributes matching the cards you're trying to fusion summon the most, like Earths to summon Shekinaga, Darks to summon Winda, etc. But in general, expect most of these Rescue Rabbit targets to be largely useless to your overall game plan. The one sole exception to this rule, however, is Whirlwind Weasel. Prediction Princess Shadal only gets more viable with this Link Monster to make plays requiring less cards, because that is what this card allows. And Whirlwind Weasel can be played as your Rescue Rabbit target, 
to make Construct and then be revived and abused with Prediction Princess Taratre to not allow your opponent to play spells or traps for the entire turn and possibly lock them out of the game because of it. Many of today's decks heavily rely on spell-based searchers or extenders during their turns to make plays, so in terms of Rescue Cat targets, this is probably the most viable option in my opinion, and Prediction Princess Shadals is definitely the first deck I'm going to be looking towards when I start testing this card. But that's also because Tara Trey has never stopped being a really good boss monster, and pre-preparation of rights is always going to be a plus one, so I mean... There's obviously just good things all around being thrown around in that deck. I'm surprised that deck never actually got a time to shine, just because of how the format was stacked against it at that point. Still, all in all, this card is super solid support for Shadals, even in the absence of Big Construct. Maybe when this card gets closer to release, we can hope for Konami unbanning El Shadal Construct, maybe to at least one, to push the sales of the Link Vrain's pack support waves because of this card's existence. Lore-wise, I'm not 100% sure at the moment where this construct specifically falls in, because the card artwork is Construct trapped inside one of the liquid canisters on Infernoid Shjete, which is the Infernoid that banishes your opponent's extra deck monsters when it declares attacks. So, funnily enough, that actually fits in terms of effect corresponding to lore. Like, it dealt with Construct. Construct was an extra deck monster. Neat. But the Shadals were around before the Infernoids were ever set free. In fact, El Shadal Winda is the one who destroyed the Naturia Sacred Tree as depicted on El Shadal Fusion's artwork, which was the seal keeping the Cleforts and the Infernoids trapped together and away from the rest of the world. So after the Infernoids were allowed to roam free, it looks like Construct's story is pretty tragic, being entrapped by the very creatures her own clan set free. It's been a long time since I last read the lore guides, so how things got to this point and where they go from here is something that I don't really remember too well or too fondly. I guess I'll just have to let my resident lore experts chime in and fill in the blanks, because I love Yu-Gi-Oh! lore, and Yu-Gi-Oh! lore is surprisingly dark and deep for a children's card game, am I right? It gets really deep, really weird, and really, like, ugh, like, tragic at times. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, if you like this style of video specifically and want to be able to support my ability to make more of these types of videos, because they do take a lot of time, then Patreon is definitely the best way to do so. And you'd have my eternal gratitude in advance for any support that you'd like to give to help out the channel. It helps out a ton, and like I said, you would have my eternal thanks because it's amazing how much it assists the ability for me to do things for this channel. But otherwise, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you know any of the lore, definitely let me know. Fill me in in the comments down below. Or if you have other ways to contact me, then definitely do that as well because I need to refresh my lore knowledge. But anyway, other than that, take care, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Alright, so now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, a lot more than you may ever know, and you have my eternal gratitude. You guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.